Hopes were high among Ukrainian nationalists when the Nazis invaded Ukraine in 1941. But these hopes were soon dashed as the Nazis soon overran the whole of Ukraine. Then, when the Nazis were driven out, the war damage was enormous. Challenging times awaited the Ukrainians. In this video, we're going to discuss what happened with Ukraine after the Second World War. Ukraine during the Cold War. Hey, welcome back regular viewers. My name is Stefan. I'm a history teacher, hustling history for you. And if you like this content, please consider subscribing. Also hit the notification bell to become part of the hustle. Let's start. The Second World War had left Ukraine in ruins. Here in and around Kharkiv, four major battles had been fought and 70% of the city was destroyed. Kyiv suffered even greater damage. Furthermore, 28,000 villages and 714 cities and towns were destroyed. And as the Nazis retreated, many agricultural and industrial sites were systematically laid to waste. We're now only talking about the material damage. The human suffering was beyond measurement. Seven million Ukrainians are believed to have died during the Second World War, many of them of starvation. Among them, one million Jews that were massacred at the death pit like Babin Jar. Countless Ukrainians served as forced laborers in Germany and died during the abysmal working conditions. Speaking of such conditions, many Ukrainians that served in the Red Army and were taken POW by the Germans suffered greatly as well. Those who survived had to go home. Just like in the rest of Europe, there was the problem of the enormous amount of displaced people. And the Ukrainians that were repatriated to their country were seen as collaborators by the Soviet authorities. And many of them were executed or deported to the Gulag. During the post-war years, a process of ethnic homogenization was set in motion. Germans had to go to Germany. Poles to Poland and Ukrainians to Ukrainian territory. And I'm saying Ukrainian territory because Ukraine didn't exist as a sovereign nation. After the war, the Ukrainian Socialist Soviet Republic, the Ukrainian SSR, was reinstated and although part of the Soviet Union, it was one of the founding members of the United Nations. The Ukrainian SSR was extended to the Kurzon line with the territories of former Eastern Poland. These territories were already conquered and occupied by the Soviets in September 1939, but lost to the Germans in June 1941. When the Nazis invaded, they were briefly assisted by the Ukrainian insurgent army, the UPA. When it turned out the Nazis would in no way live up to the Ukrainian wish for independence, the UPA fought against the Nazis and later the Soviets. The Soviets mercilessly repressed these nationalists and on Stalin's orders, tens of thousands of Ukrainians, nationalists or not, were deported to the Gulag. Right after the war, the same drastic economic principles of collectivization were carried out on the Ukrainian territory. The bureaucratic system was severely inflexible and had no eye for local problems or local matters. And combined with the fact that many farmers had left for the cities because there were jobs available there, and with a severe drought in 1946, it led to the Soviet famine of 1946-47. It's believed that one and a half million Soviet citizens had perished in this famine. Yet, despite these setbacks, the Soviet Union and also Ukraine managed to recover. As historian Ot Arne Wistad wrote, the priority was heavy industry. Steel plants and machinery production were always top of the list. Still, on its own terms. Soviet output returned to its pre-war capacity remarkably quickly. A significant reason for this was simply peace. In one way or another, Russia had always been at war, internally or externally, through wars, civil war, collectivization or purges since 1914. With at least a semblance of peace, Soviet production was able to catch up on the backlog of unrealized potential and seemingly make great strides for the late 1940s on. And then in 1953, Stalin passed away and he was succeeded by Nikita Khrushchev. Now, he started the process of de-Stalinization where he condemned the massive repressions that were carried out in the administration of Joseph Stalin and also the personality cult of the former Soviet leader. Many prisoners from the Gulag were now released and the major repressions against the Soviet citizens were now halted. This era of liberalization is also known as the Thaw. In 1954, the Crimean Oblast was transferred to the Ukrainian SSR. And this was basically a symbolic gesture because of the 300 year anniversary that Ukraine became part of the Russian Empire. As Soviet newspaper Pravda wrote, taking into account the integral character of the economy, the territorial proximity and the close economic and cultural ties between the Crimea province and the Ukrainian SSR. 
Other sources say that Nikita Khrushchev was drunk when he signed the oblast to be transferred. The thaw came to an end when Khrushchev was ousted by Brezhnev in 1964. Interesting enough, Brezhnev was an ethnic Ukrainian. However, under his rule, there were more repressions, although it would never be as bad as under the times of Joseph Stalin. Brezhnev passed away in 1982 and was succeeded by Yuran Antropov, who died shortly after. He was succeeded by Konstantin Chernenko, who ruled for little more than a year. Chernenko was on his turn succeeded by Mikhail Gorbachev in 1985. On the 26th of April, 19. 86, the Chernobyl disaster happened. It was the largest nuclear incident that had occurred. I visited that place in 2018 and it's very interesting what the whole of Europe might have looked like if it had gotten worse. Mikhail Gorbachev applied liberal policies. This led to a coup attempt by Heartland Communists in August 1991. Shortly after, the Ukrainian SSR proclaimed its own independence. And a few weeks later, December 1991, the Soviet Union was dissolved. If you wanna know more about how the Russian territory evolved from Tsarist Russia to Soviet Union to the Russian Federation, you can click right here. Also check me out on Patreon because with your donations, I can travel to cool places like this and make videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. See you later.